Thank you very much for inviting Sirka to this um, very relevant forum. So I'm here to present a study called Exploring Youth Development Outcomes in Agri-Based Youth Clubs and some insights for rural youth investments and engagement in agriculture. So just a, a brief background there for this study, there's a global recognition, as mentioned earlier by Dr. Urbeta, that young people are critical resources for the world's development agenda. 90% of the youth are in developing countries and roughly half of them are in rural areas. And the, in the literature, we've also had um, too much focus on youth engagement in agriculture, but there's actually less investigation on the role of adults. And we see the need to examine outcomes of youth engagement in agriculture to young people themselves. So for this study, the main objective is um, examining youth adult engagement in community-based agriculture projects, and it's linked to positive youth development outcomes among the 4-H youth of Bicol, Philippines. So this study pursued four objectives, which I will discuss in the next slides. So to illustrate, this is the conceptual framework of the study, examining the context of the 4-H youth, uh, individually and organizationally, we have the independent variables of youth adult engagement with three dimensions. Um, then we have the dependent variables, which are the positive youth development outcomes. So the study um, employed an exploratory sequential mix methods involving KAIs, um, FGDs, document reviews, non-participant observation, and survey. So the study was conducted in two provinces of Bicol, Camarines Norte, and Albay. And uh, there were 10 clubs, uh, five clubs in each province, and a total of 154 respondents. So uh, to illustrate again uh, the, the sequential mixed methods, uh, the study was divided into three phases from phase one, uh, primarily qualitative, phase two, uh, the development of the instrument and the quantitative, and phase three is more on the validation and the finaliz finalization of the results. And reflexivity was also employed throughout the study. So let's get to know first about 4-H um, Club. So it, it is an organization of out-of-school youth, OSY, and in-school youth involved in agriculture programs and livelihood projects for the fourfold development of the head, heart, hands, and health. So, kaya po siya 4-H. Uh, for single youth, uh, uh, age 15 to 30 years old, and membership is open and voluntary. And again, it emphasizes community-based projects in agriculture and homemaking. And 4-H is actually designed as well to be an avenue for farm family development. So 4-H Club today, uh, perhaps some of the audience are also members of 4-H Club or have been a member of 4-H Club. So staple programs uh, organized by DA, by ATI are training programs, internships in Taiwan, in Japan. Then they have this um, annual youth summits or youth camps, and they actually have a a regional or municipal or provincial versions of these youth camps where they engage in networking activities and seminars and learning opportunities related to agriculture and youth development. So uh, within the community setting, uh, of course, the clubs, uh, there, there are at least one, uh, there, there, there's at least one uh, club that can be organ organized in a barangay. So clubs have a set of officers and a volunteer leader. So when volunteer leader, ito po yung parang advisor nila. Um, then uh, they engage, they are required to engage in community-based agriculture projects. It could be individual or it could be by group. And the nature of projects are actually wide-ranging depending on the preferences of young people and of course the priorities of the local government. So let's have some social demographic um, profile of the 4-H youth on average, uh, 21 years old, 47%, um, 53% um, gender segregation. Uh, almost 80% of the surveyed respondents are in-school youth. 64% of the ISY are in college. And on average, 2.72 years, they've been a 4 h -er for uh, 2.72 years, so that's within one to three years. So many of them have joined the 4-H club actually um, for the last three years, including the at, the at the height of the pandemic.
In terms of membership, 40% uh, hold leadership positions in the club. So there are there there's at least uh, eight eight um, set of officers uh, in each club. Twenty seven percent are with other youth organizations. So this could be with SK, Sangguni Ang Kabataan, um, student councils, and other relevant youth organizations in their community. And seventy two percent come from a farming family. So let's look at the enablers of participation. So there are three main themes, experien experiential, social, psychological, and economic. So experiential because a lot of them are really more on, into experiential learning, specifically on uh, developing their skills related to agriculture. Social, psychological, uh, there's also, uh, we've seen as well, the uh, desire to engage in socialization activities, uh, when they do communal gardens, for instance, or when they join the youth camps where they are able to uh, network with other young people in their province or in their municipality. Uh, also the economic, because they uh, since they engage in livelihood projects, they also um, venture into um, income generating activities. But on the economic side, I would also like to highlight that it's not necessarily about the income because it's um, the main goal of generating income is for them to have um, um, not for person, not necessarily for personal benefit, but more on for um, funding their socialization activities. So, sa mga bata, they parang they get excited whenever they have income kunyari, from the harvest from their garden, kasi magagamit nila yun for socialization activities, mag excursion sila, or mag, uh, mag team building activities sila. So it's somewhat related to the psychological, social psychological enabler. So these three themes of enablers of participation are uh, framed within an enabling environment, specifically the support of adults in the community. Uh, for each coordinators, uh, typically these are um, uh, agriculturists, uh, technicians from the muni uh, municipal governments, volunteer leaders, their parents, uh, their local officials, and other um, adults within the community. Now we look into the barriers of youth participation. Uh, ano yung mga uipigil sa kanila or what hinders them from participating in their projects and activities. Primarily uh, is academic commitment because we've noted that 80% are in school youth. So kahit nag, uh, nag pandemic, uh, some of them, many of them turned into modular uh, into modular education. So uh, kahit na gusto po nilang sumali sa mga agriculture projects nila sa community, uh, they are hindered by academic commitments. And also, household and family duties because we've noted that um, many of the young, young people engaged in 4-H they are still dependent uh, in their family and their parents. Other themes are, of course, religious commitments. Uh, meron silang gagawin sa simbahan, occupational, work outside the community, specifically for those who are graduates already or nagtatrabaho na. Uh, and then political, because again, we've noted that uh, some of them are engaged in SKs and, and, uh, and in other um, student councils in the university or other uh, political engagements that they have. So now we look into youth adult engagement. Again, I'd like to emphasize that the, this, uh, this construct has three dimensions. Uh, youth involvement, adult involvement, and youth adult interaction. So what you can see in this table is in general, there is a high level of youth adult engagement uh, among the 4-H clubs of PECON. So anong ibig sabihin nito? So this basically means that for each dimension, uh, there's uh, very high youth involvement wherein young people provide leadership uh, from the design to the implementation of these projects and in mobilizing their resources. There's also a high level of adult involvement where uh, the adults in the community provide advisory uh, or mentorship and resource sharing goals. Uh, limbawa, kapag nakita nila na uh, walang, walang pampasnacks yung uh, mga bata or kulay yung pondo, some of the adults take, uh, uh, provide financial support for them or resource sharing rules or as simple as uh, pagpapahiram ng mga gardening tools sa mga bata when they engage in communal gardens. And finally, the youth-adult interaction dimension. Uh, we've seen that uh, they interact through, again, mentorship built 
in a high level of trust. So there's a high level of trust in terms of decision making that that young uh, mutually uh, they respect each other and then they, they trust each other in terms of coming up with decisions or they the adults trust um, young people and their decisions on what they prefer in terms of their projects and adults themselves uh, being trusted by young people that they look up to them and they rely on their expertise on some aspects of the projects. And then this um, process results to a good camaraderie. So uh, many sabi from the research participants that uh, they have a very uh, strong uh, camaraderie within the community because of their engagements in 4-H club. So using the theoretical perspective of uh, the typology of youth participation and empowerment or the type model, uh, these findings uh, provide insight that um, among the 4-H club, uh, it shows a pluralistic type of participation where th wherein there's a shared control over decision making. Uh, according to this theory, uh, th that's an ideal social arrangement for positive youth development and empowerment, wherein young people have voice and active participant role, and adults' presence is to maximize conditions and opportunities for youth, and their involvement is not overly dominant nor underinvolved. Kumbaga, sa madaling sabi, sakto lang po yung involvement nila, not overly dominant but uh, not underinvolved as well. Now we look into uh, positive youth development outcomes. It's this is a strengths-based perspective that views young people as resources to be developed rather than problems to be solved. Uh, and the aim is maximizing youth potentials rather than addressing problems. And uh, the one of the famous um, theories on this is the perspective of learner in terms of promoting the five Cs. Uh, competence, confidence, connection, caring, character, and then in the recent decade, uh, the, the sixth C, which is the contribution, was added to this theory. So in general, there's a high level of um, positive youth development outcomes among the 4-H youth. And if you will notice here, the 13th statement, uh, I understand better the problems of Filipino farmers and the agriculture sector. So there's that um, sense of appreciation uh, in the agriculture sector. Now, um, since we've discussed youth adult engagement, YAE, and the positive youth development, uh, we uh, attempted to describe the relationship and we came up with three models. Model one, basically what it says is youth adult engagement is a predictor of positive youth development. Model two, uh, only youth involvement and adult involvement are significantly uh, explain significantly explain variables of the PYD outcomes, and in model three, without even without the youth adult uh, involvement dimension, youth involvement and adult involvement remain significant. Uh, remains as a significant predictor even with improved coefficients, and it confirms that youth adult involv involvement is not a mediating variable. So in summary, this is the final um, model uh, responding to the research question. Uh, enhancing youth adult engagement yields improved positive youth development outcomes among the 4-H youth. So if you will see here, um, these are the three dimensions of YAE, youth adult interaction, adult involvement, youth involvement. Uh, enhancing them makes a uh, improvements in terms of the PYD outcomes, the six Cs. The study also look into the uh, career intentions of the 4 H youth kasi madalas po siyang nababanggit during the interviews. So um, we've noted that 75% are likely to pursue agriculture-related courses in the university. Half of them are likely to pursue agriculture on a part-time basis, 26% uh, full-time. So marami nagsasabi dito that um, they may not uh, engage on a full-time basis in agriculture related in the future. However, uh, they express that they still want to be engaged in agriculture, perhaps as a, as a weekend farmer or bilang uh, part-time lang or uh, sideline lang nila. They might engage in hydroponics, but not on a full-time basis. And uh, we also ask if given the economic opportunities in their community, 
69% stands to stay and 22% might stay. 9% are not sure at this time, but none said no to this scenario. So, because we, they were asked if um, kapag pinigyan, kung meron bang economic opportunities or meron mga pagkakataon or uh, pagkakataon para kumita sa community mo, mas gugustuhin mo ba na dito ka na lang sa community ninyo or gusto mo pang umalis? So, walang nagsabing no to this uh, scenario. Alright, so last few minutes, uh, some key messages from this study, I'd like to focus on this slide. Uh, we've seen that youth engagement in agriculture goes beyond the youth themselves because we've seen that adults, especially those in the communities, they play a meaningful and, in, in, and an enabling role for both the positive development of the youth and their communities. I'd like to quote uh, Wong on this, uh, where, where they said that uh, youth, young people cannot be expected to carry the full burden of empowering themselves in their communities. Adults ought to share in that in this responsibility. So, ibig sabihin, hindi lang tayo puro youth, but we also look into the roles of adults for youth engagement and youth development. And we've seen in this study that critical foundations for rural youth empowerment, it can be nurtured in agri-based youth clubs, and their engagement in agri-based youth clubs uh, particularly in the case of 4-H, it enhances their social psychological skills, social capital, and sense of appreciation of and contribution to agriculture, among others. So, hindi natin kailangang, uh, we don't need to look far because in the rural communities, there are opportunities already for rural youth empowerment. There are challenges, yes, but uh, in the case of 4-H club, we've seen how these young people were able to uh, maximize their resources or mobilize their resources and with the adults playing an enabling role. Again, um, we've seen that enhancing youth involvement and adult involvement enhances the dynamics of youth and in adult interactions that are critical for the youth's transition to adulthood. So, uh, nakita natin yung advisory role ng mga parents, ng volunteer leaders, even ng local officials, how they nurture these young people and help them transition into adulthood. And finally, um, we've seen that 4-H Club has a positive influence to the career intentions of the youth that are in favor to agriculture and rural development. So in this study, we've actually uh, debunked the myth that young people don't want to farm anymore or, or they want to leave the rural areas. Because among the respondents, if my opportunities naman sa rural communities, they would rather stay there. But of course, there are some program and policy recommendations on how we can uh, work towards that direction. So some recommendations, um, one is to, in terms of education, formal and non-formal education, emphasize the food systems approach in the curriculum, trainings, and other capacity building activities so as to expand their awareness and options uh, in terms of career that they want to pursue. Uh, we've noted that um, many of these uh, community-based projects are more on the production side, but perhaps when they have a bigger picture on the wider agri-food system, when they have knowledge and awareness on those aspects, it might expand their um, career options related to that. Uh, second, uh, this is somewhat uh, related to the first presentation by Dr. Magno. Of course, there's an, a, a need for strength and youth leadership, organizational development, and project management skills of the 4-H youth. And of course, again, as we've noted, that it's not just about young people themselves, but also the adults in the community. So uh, trainings for adults or adult learning interventions are also critical, especially on topics on how to work with young people. Because and that many insights uh, in the communities uh, with these voluntary leaders on how they work with young people. So it might be an opportunity to share best practices and how to enhance uh, their work with young people. A uh, fourth, of course, is improving access to capital and capacity for value added activities because, again, we've noted that it's a more on the production side and enhancing uh, youth participation in the policy process, uh, both at the local and national level. And uh, since we have the Philippine Youth Development Plan to be developed uh, soon, uh, I guess uh, there's a greater call for uh, enhancing youth participation in the policy process. And we've noted here that uh, the 4-H club members, they exhibit um, a shared control in terms of decision-making, which is a good practice for organizational governance. 
And finally, it's nurturing relationships of 4-H with local institutions, uh, specifically uh, with Sangguni Ang Kabataan. Then we also have the local youth development offices because uh, these are, in terms of policy uh, action, uh, working with them would be very critical. Uh, because one of the challenges of the 4-H clubs is actually in sustaining their community-based projects because walang pondo or kulang, yun nga, kulang sa resources. So it's it's very critical for them to be engaged in the political process or in the policy-making process by working closely with SKs, LYDOs, and the local government in general. So that's it for my study. And I also invite you to check out our website uh, where you can have some access to our um, related relevant publications to this topic. Yun lang po, Jos Mabalos, and have a beautiful day.